you haven't seen examples eight and nine, go back and watch them because it kind of won't make sense. We're looking at the third form of the equation of a line, which is symmetric form. Um, in order to, to start on this, I'm just going to dive back to the end of example nine, uh, which I still got up in all its glorious technicolor. And we had a look at parametric form. Now, down at the bottom here are our e equations in parametric form. And we've got, you can see here, three equations, x, y, and z, all in terms of t. If we were to actually rearrange these equations in terms of t, we would end up with these things here. In the first one, we would have t equals x minus 6 over 2. Get rid of that wee area, just to give it a bit of space. x minus 6 over 2. Uh, the second one we would have, if we rearranged that, we would have t equals y minus 3 over negative 3. And in the third z equation, we would get uh, t equals z plus 1 over negative 1. If you notice that we can rearrange all these parametric equations in terms of t, it stands to reason then that this value here is equal to t, but so is that. So is that. In other words, we can actually equate all those right-hand sides to each other. We can say that that is equal to that, which is equal to that. And that's the basis of a symmetric form. We're actually going to create a, an equation with three equal fractions in it. So just going back into this, we can effectively rearrange it so that we have t equals okay, x minus a, which is the coordinate point over L, which is a direction vector part for each of the X, Y, and Z parametric equations. And then we can put them together in this form here because we know that they all equal T. Now, this is the key thing. T hasn't disappeared. It's there. But when it suits us, we can drop it because it's the, the other fractions that are of interest. But if we want to recreate the parametric equations, we have to reintroduce it equals t and then split them up again so t is in the shadows there okay that is the form which we call symmetric or cartesian form which most equations of the lines are given in as far as we are concerned okay so i uh, notice that some interesting things here so the denominators l m and n are just the the different components of the direction vector so that's nice to be able to just see them there and also We've got negative a, negative b, and negative c. So if we know the coordinate point uh, and its components a, b, and c, we have to effectively uh, add the negative of that or subtract that value. So it means we have to be careful that if we've got negative coordinate points, we're going to end up with a, a plus sign on the top there. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. Uh, find the symmetrical form of the equation of the line. So we've got two examples. First of all, through a point in a given direction, uh, and then through a point parallel to another line in that form. So again, we're still talking about the idea of some line that we've got, which is parallel to some line for which we know the direction. In this case, it's two. We're given it in uh, vector form already. Two, negative three, five. And we know the point uh, A, as far as we're concerned, is 4, negative 1, 3. That's A. And we've got some uh, point R. Now, the good news about symmetrical form is that we don't actually need to start with the vector form of the line. Okay? I would like, if you're not going to write out the whole answer, I would like you to define, first of all, the fact that the key things that we know are the direction vector. When I say answer, I mean, if you're not going to write out the whole question, sorry. Uh, it's 2, negative 3, 5 is direction vector. And our point that we know is 4 as far as um, we're dealing with the position vector. It's 4, negative 1, 3. You can actually do the equation of a line by inspection. Okay, So the equation of the line in symmetrical form, we'll call it L1. We've got three fractions. The denominator of each fraction is the elements of the direction vector. So we've got 2, negative 3, and 5. We introduce our x, y, and 
z variables here, and we're going to subtract from x, y, and z the elements of the position vector a. We're going to subtract 4, we're going to subtract negative 1, so that becomes plus 1, and we're going to subtract 3, and that instantly is the equation of our line, which is why, it's, of course, it's a very common and popular form to use. We can create the equation quickly, but we can also, if we're given that kind of line, we can extract information quickly about direction vectors and points on the line. So if we look at example B, we're told that we want uh, to find the equation of a line through the point negative 2, 4, 0. So that becomes our A point, A equals negative 2, 4, 0. And we're told it's parallel to this line here. So all of a sudden, we're not given some uh, random uh, direction vector. We're told it's parallel to another line. But of course, the direction vector of that line is staring us in the face. It's here. So we can say quite easily that the direction vector of both lines, the line that's uh, been given and the line we want to work out, is both 2, negative 1, 6. Okay? Which means that we can find the equation of uh, this line. And we'll call this L2. Again, we're going to construct three fractions. Our direction vector goes on the bottom, so it will have exactly the same denominators as the parallel line, which is a, a nice thing to note. And we've got our x, y, and z variables here. We're going to subtract the components of oops, wrong one, of um, our position vector a. So we're going to subtract negative 2. We're going to subtract 4 from y and subtract 0 from z. So we kind of we don't need to do that. We just I'll plop z in a bit more centrally then. Okay. There we go. Now there is one uh, particular issue with working out the equation of a line, and that is that it's not always a unique equation. Okay, not always a unique equation. And if we're going to go into exercise uh, example eleven, we'll find sometimes we have more than one point uh, that we know. And obviously, if we substitute, if we use a different value for a, we're going to get a different equation. So, slight problem with um, three-dimensional geometry in this uh, way, unlike two-dimensional equations of lines where, effectively, you can always simplify uh, an equation to be the same. The equation of a line is not unique, and we'll have to just wrestle with that later on. So, that's how we write it in symmetric or Cartesian form, and hopefully you can see the benefits of doing it in this way. And remember, there's a wee shadow here, because we could always write that equal to t. Okay, when you go and have a look at example 11.